Hi, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. Weird week in military news. The president straight up fired the Secretary of the Navy. And it was all over that perpetual wound to the Navy side, Eddie Gallagher. I don't want to relive this whole case, but for those of you that don't know, here's the Cliff Notes version. Gallagher was accused of a bunch of war crimes. He then threatened the guys that turned him in via text. The Navy completely botched the trial and even did some illegal things, so the entire case was dropped except for uh, the minor war crime of him taking a picture with a dead ISIS fighter. That got him four months in prison, which he had already served. So four questions remained. Would Gallagher get to retire with his rank? Would he get an honorable discharge? Would he get to keep his seal trident? Would he get a veteran t-shirt deal when it was all said and done? The answer to all of these questions was supposed to happen through the normal process of a peer review board. Instead, it was circumvented by President Trump tweeting that he was going to get to keep all of these things and it was time to move on. The SECNAV didn't like that, and because he hadn't received an official order from the president, he went about the business of allowing chief business to be chief business, and then he got the business. The Marine deserter accused of killing his mother's boyfriend has been arrested. 22-year-old Michael Alexander Brown has been on the run since November 9th, and many attempts to set up fake beachheads to entice him to storm them have failed. Right now, police say his motive is unknown. Sad news tonight, as a young woman from the University of Illinois in Chicago was found murdered. Police quickly identified and tracked down the suspect through mass transit cameras and arrested him. 26-year-old Donald Thurman, who was out on parole, confessed to the killing when he was apprehended. Police say he grew angry with the victim, 19-year-old Ruth George, when she wouldn't give him attention. He followed her back to her car in the parking lot after she left the library. Thurman attacked her from behind, strangling her, and then left her in her car where she was found a day later. Hey dickheads, women do not owe you attention. They do not owe you attention. President Trump enacted a bipartisan initiative this week making animal cruelty a felony. This was a pretty great move by the president. Now to clean up the VA, impose term limits on Congress, and better fund our national education system. And if you're feeling froggy, national conceal and carry reciprocity. I'm feeling optimistic. In more bipartisan news, Trump signed a bill this week to support Hong Kong, which really pissed China off. Many people thought he was gonna balk at this one, and I, for one, am happy that he went through this and saw it to its rightful conclusion. It's the right thing to do. And speaking of Hong Kong, the pro-democracy camp has taken the elections in a landslide, earning 17 of 18 district council positions. That was a good victory for the people of Hong Kong and a legitimate signal of their resolve. Mainland China, unsurprisingly, has just basically said it doesn't care and just wants to get back to absorbing Hong Kong into China like an evil amoeba. The elections are a good start, but those positions don't carry a lot of political power. The next step may be voting out China-backed Chief Executive Kerry Lam in the 2022 elections. Protests still continue and the fight is far from over. Conan the Fur Missile, who aided in tracking down and ultimately killing Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, was honored at the White House this week. President Trump, Vice President Pence, and First Lady Melania stood before an adoring media crowd as Conan was honored by the press. After arguing for over a month about Conan's gender, the media looked at his junk. Turns out, he has a penis. Virginia lawmakers are attempting to pass anti-gun legislation that sounds as absurd as you think it would. It lists essentially every gun and every gun pot by itself as an assault weapon, which would be punishable as a felony. The bill is crammed with uneducated and grossly vague definitions of what defines an assault weapon. Everything is, according to this bill. As expected, people are pissed and reportedly mustering heavy opposition to this bill. Citizens are calling for their counties to become 2A sanctuaries and asking their law enforcement officials not to uphold these laws should they go into effect. I can't see this passing, but the fact that it's even proposed is disconcerting and should probably be taken seriously unlike the people who proposed it. President Trump has declared that Mexican drug cartels are terrorist organizations. 
He has already offered to send in American forces to help quell the unrest. Mexico has thus far declined U.S. intervention, but says it welcomes cooperation. Regardless, labeling the cartels as terrorist organizations really loosens up the old reins on how the United States can respond when, say, a few members of America get murdered while over there. And yes, I know they have their own backstory, but I'm just saying that when you're dealing with a terrorist organization, the reins get loosened a little bit for the good guys that want to go and do bad things to bad people. Like New York City police detective John McClain or Los Angeles police detective Martin Riggs. Sometimes you just have to go that extra mile to get the job done. Anyway, Sicario 3 and some sweet, sweet drone strikes coming right up. Following up on our previous report, former Baltimore Mayor Catherine Pugh pleaded guilty to corruption charges. The guilty plea is a deal charging her for only four of the 11 charges which she was initially indicted for. The prosecution is recommending she does five years in prison. Pugh is the second Baltimore mayor to resign in the past decade for corruption. In 2010, Mayor Sheila Dixon was busted for stealing gift cards that were intended for the needy in order to pay for presents and electronics for herself. She was later convicted of embezzlement. And in Florida news, 60-year-old Donald Stewart was asleep in his van with his girlfriend and his 11-year-old son when a man tried to rob him at gunpoint. According to Stewart, the man pointed an AK right in his face and demanded all of his jewelry. Stewart stated that he's from Kingston, Jamaica, and he wasn't going to go out like a punk, so he emptied his Glock into the man's chest. The robber died simultaneously from surprise, and 17, maybe 18 if he's got one in the pipe, rounds to the chest. Donovan stated that he owned his firearm legally, has a concealed carry permit, and is a proud member of the NRA. You know, probably nine out of 10 times, if you rob a man in a van down by the river, you're gonna be okay, but not this man. And finally, I'd like to close with a reminder that if you're watching this right now, you're likely living in the most powerful country to ever grace this earth, and you're living in a time of unprecedented opportunity beyond the wildest dreams of all previous generations. Maybe just be a little thankful for that. Life's a pretty good gig. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already, and we don't do this often, but it's Black Friday. And if you want to shop, go to rangerup.com and use code Black Friday for 30% off. Biggest sale of the year, and it's what allows us to keep doing this stuff. Thanks a lot, and have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving!